No, it's no, it's hey, hey, can I do the light? Is it ready? ready? Go for it. Well, good morning, Fresh Pound Cowboys. So, we're watching the Mountain Mike Report. Joe Jurassic is on the line. I'll count you here and there's a new show. She's a camera as well. Fresh Pound Cowboys. 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 Fresh P
praise as well. We're going to worship you in spirit and truth, God, because you are so deserving. Amen. Amen. Praise is rising. Confidently, and in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. God says that if we don't know what to pray sometimes that the Holy Spirit knows how to intercede for our halves.
this next song please don't forget our prayer corners are open if something is heavy on your heart maybe there's lies attacking your mind right now go go lay it down at his feet if anything else turn in the gap for someone i know you know someone out there who's struggling who's fighting something who needs to be raised up i know i could use prayer i know we could use prayer so please don't hesitate God longs to hear from you. And the saint ready to pray with you.
not lift our souls unto another. Oh, give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls unto another. Oh, God, let this be a generation that seeks, who seeks your face.
such a worthy God that closest friend we're so grateful for you God I'm grateful for you I see you working in our church in the good the bad and even in the ugly but you are seated on the throne God you are God alone and you are in control of my life of every person in this room church do you believe that what hope what joy do we find in knowing that God loves us his heart is for us and that we get to see it in each and one of us I see so many people in this room that I'm so thankful to God for the love the grace and so even though he calls us friend and we're no longer servants we are friends we are children of God he's holy knowing that we get to be in his presence, that we get to sing these songs, that we get to call out these truths, that there is no more fear. He's dried our tears because he knows that those tears will be there, but he knows that they're there and he dries them for us. We can lay everything at the feet of Jesus. His grace abounds to all who found at the feet of Jesus.
were so wonderful and we were so eager and excited to see how you will speak, how you will move. The hope, the joy, the anticipation, the eagerness, the excitement, God, to speak to us. Will you speak to us today? Church, we love you. Kiddos, you guys are dismissed to your classes. Learn something and tell me about it. Amen. And church, would you turn around and say hi to each other as we wait for our pastor to come up with his word. Good morning. I have a few updates for you. First of all, our midweek study is in Genesis. Every Wednesday night at 6.30, we study the Bible, going through the book of Genesis with Pastor Donnie. Come out to the refresh room and join us there. Our Revelation study is happening every Thursday evening in Sun City Festival with Deacon Norm. That happens on Thursdays at 6.30. He'd love to have you out there in the festival area if you live out that, that way. The address is Buckeye, but it's actually out in Sun City Festival. So make your way out there. We also have a newcomer's dinner this coming Saturday night. It is the 27th at 5.30 in the refresh room. And if you are a newcomer, we'd love to have you. Whether you have been here for a while and you just don't know our story, or you've never come, we want you to come on out for dinner, learn about the calling on our life to start this church in our living room four years ago, and where God is leading us in the future. So please come on out. Whether you've been here a while or this is your first week, we'd love to have you. As you know, we have a food pantry. We mentioned that a couple weeks ago in our Did You Know campaign of 2024. We have a food pantry that opens about every other week, and we will be announcing that. We would love it if you and your families, your neighbors, come on out and get food. If there's any needs at all, we want to bless you with food. It is the least we can do, and the food does no good in our pantry, so please help yourself to that. If it is not a pantry week and you need food, please just give us a call or an email, and we'd love to open it up for you. Hey, for our singles, we've got a singles potluck coming up this week. This Saturday, nope, this Friday night, we have a singles potluck hosted by Shauna at her home in Waddell. So if you're interested in a little Mexican potluck and hanging out with other singles, please see Deanna at the Connect table for more details. As always, we never pass the plate here at Refresh, so if you'd like to give your tithes and offerings, you may do so in the agape boxes in the back, or you can do so on our website, refreshaz.church, and that's also where you can find a list of our current events and how you can get plugged in. I want to also let you know one thing. We have changed our giving interface. What does that mean? That means if you have our app or you go onto our website to give, it looks a little different. So, it still functions the same, it now is just going to one location. So yay me, 
I can merge the accounts all in one place, and so that's a blessing. But if it looks a little bit different, it's the same thing, don't worry. And I've set it up so that confetti will fall on the screen once you've done it right. So you can celebrate, and so can we. You're giving to the Lord, and you know for sure that you're giving to the right place. So thank you for that. And uh, it's another Did You Know campaign day. So did you know that we have a homeless ministry? I heard an O. Oh. This is why we do this campaign. So we have a homeless ministry called You Matter Ministry. You Matter Ministry goes down to Phoenix, downtown Phoenix, on the fourth Saturday of every month. We do a collection of blankets and clothes and socks, food and any other items that you might not want that might bless other people throughout the month. And Joe and his beautiful wife, Veronica, she's currently translating for us in the back. So when you hear those little whispers over in that corner, that sweet Veronica translating every message on Sundays into Spanish. She likes being behind the scenes. So she said, oh, bummer, I'll have to translate, so I won't be up on stage. But you can find her and thank her for this special ministry. Also, their kiddos, this is Erin and Gracie, and they go faithfully on the fourth Saturday of every month. So if you want to know how you can get involved in You Matter Ministry, please see Deacon Joe, Erin, Gracie, or Veronica to see how you can get plugged in. So we're going to pray for them this morning. Lord, we thank you for these amazing people, the grace that you've given them the fortitude to do when nobody goes with them, the faithful service to, their, to, to Joe and as he's been used there, as I've seen mightily now, as he's even translating the message for the people that are serving there, Lord. Continue to use them, bless them, Lord, and let us come alongside them to continue to serve, Lord. Give them continual health, prosper them. Pray for Veronica as she's me. Thank you for her translating for us, Lord. This family is such a blessing to our lives in the do, their doers, Lord. Thank you for them. Pray a continual blessing upon their life. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. 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 Yep, almost like you. Good job. That's our little joke. Don't get weird. I love my wife. That's my wife, Kobe. Am I in the light, Jeremiah? Yes or no? Yay. Good morning. Welcome to this Sunday, and we are in Nehemiah, did y'all get your books? So there's an opportunity in there for some changes. John is gone this week. We're going to go through it though and look at it. We did catch an error, but we're going to we're going to fix it. So just know that this book is written with love, pain, suffering, and grace. All of it, all together. Thank you, John. Thank you, Tammy. This book is helping you to have something to catalog. What we do, it encourages you also to take away the souvenirs that we've listed and also what God might be saying to you as you take notes. And Lord willing, you take notes. Amen? Amen. Lastly, the Calvary Chapel magazine is there. If you haven't gotten that, please, it's free also. We get that there. You can see talks about what's going on in the world of Calvary Chapel and the like. I can see now. Look at that. That's fun. Nehemiah chapter 2. Verses 10 through 20, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 10 to 20. If you can give me an amen when you get there, let me know. Today the title of the message is The Wall. The Wall. We're going to be looking at starting and building a wall. Reminds me of a story. Would you like to hear it, Stan? Thank you for asking. I know he didn't ask. I'm just, he's a good participant. There were two men in the church. Let's just call those two men for a lack of a better opportunity. Chris and Jason. No connection between the two, but could there be? Maybe. Chris and Jason were starting to frame a house. Jay, uh, J Chris is holding the siding. Jason's pounding the nails. Chris is holding the siding and watching his buddy Jason with the hammer. Jason picks a nail of the box, hammers it into the wall. Picks up another nail of the box, looks at it, throws it over his shoulder. Picks up another nail from the box, throws it over his shoulder. Picks up another nail from the box, 
throws it over the shoulder. Chris says, Jason, what are you doing? You're throwing away the nails we bought. Jason, Jason says, I can't use them, Deanna. They're pointed the wrong way. Well, that's obviously never going to happen here, right? Right. Three souvenirs as we start our journey through Nehemiah today. Three souvenirs. Would you stand up as we read God's perfect word? Would you stand up as we read today the backwards nails? Nobody has backwards nails. I know. Jason, we love you. Chris Adair, you're not here. You're going to get it online though and you're going to see it. (laughs) Verse 11, if you will, through the end of the chapter. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Verse 12, then I rose in the night, I and a few men with me, and I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except for the one which I rode. Verse 13, And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and the refuse gate. And I viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down and its gates, which were burned with fire. Then I went to the fountain gate to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal under me to pass. Verse 15. So I went up in the night by the valley and viewed the wall. And I turned back and entered the valley gate and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I'd done and not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. Verse 17. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we're in, and how Jerusalem lies in waits, and how its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the walls of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me and also the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let's rise up and build. And they set their hands to do the good work. But when Sanballat the Hornite and Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they laughed at us and they despised us. And they said, what is this thing you're doing? Will you rebel against the king? They didn't talk like that, but that's how I hear it. So I answered them and said to them, the God of heaven, this is Nehemiah, himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. But you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Lord, we acknowledge this text as divine, as perfect, as authoritarian, and as a part of history. Lord, we acknowledge this. Lord, speak through your word. Use your servant, that's me today, to clearly communicate to your people, your kids, whom I love. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to move now. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen Amen and amen and amen. Well, it's a beautiful day. And we're going to be talking about the wall today. The wall. Not Pink Floyd's The Wall, but The Wall. Some of you might know about that. Nehemiah is in the city. He goes around looking at everything for three days. Three days. Catch that. Note that for you note takers. But notice the details and how they matter. There was a stupid saying that said the devil is in the details. Have you ever heard it? It doesn't make any sense to me. Because for me, and I can only speak for me, but I'm going to speak to you, Robinelle. Whenever I have not been detailed, I have seen more failure in my lack of planning than I have in success. I would say this, sin, apathy, and laziness is in the lack of the details. Can I get an amen? Amen. Brings me my first takeaway. I know I'm hitting you out of the block real quick, but for those who are taking notes, because you got a book if you want to write it down, details matter. Details matter. Right here in front of us today, 
We see Nehemiah it's inspecting the job at hand in verse 11 and 12. One could say that he's a great planner. Great leaders gra- gather information for the tasks they want to accomplish. So let's talk about this. Jeremiah and I have a couple cool slides to show you today. The total space around the wall is approximately 132 acres. So if you will, look at the feet on the bottom, 430, 288, 133, 792. That's a kind of, so for those of you who can imagine how big this would be, if you can think about feet and how long things are, how narrow, how wide, that's what 132 acres is, if you will. Show them the new picture of the new city, however, my brother, the new one. There it is. Gosh, I get the goosebumps. We go there. What? I know. Some of you have been there, haven't you? With me. Unbelievable. Put that one back up real quick. I'm going to do a, I added a day for our trip in October next year, 25. And we're going to do a wall tour inspired by Nehemiah. You're welcome. Nobody's ever done that. I asked, the, I asked the travel agent about that. Why can't we do that? So they can see all of these things that we go on. And for us crazy people like Alan, Daisy, and myself, and, and my son Logan, we went up on top. It was awesome. Y'all don't have to, but we did, and it was awesome. So if you would put that slide up, the second slide, thank you. This is a very large piece of land, but... Three days of inspection? Three days of inspection? Look, listen, Nehemiah is a detailed um, leader, but don't you just see the correlation of three days? Don't you just see the Jesus correlation here? Three days of looking. Three days of assessing. Three days of... To create a plan. Hey, our victory plan was made real in three days. Amen? You should get excited about that. Come on now. I am. Jesus conquered death. Jesus conquered sin in three days. It's a beautiful correlation. Yeah, beautiful details we cannot miss today. Verse 2 notes some important details that tie into these three is Nehemiah doesn't draw attention to himself. He goes at night. He doesn't want people seeing what he's doing. Telling everyone could draw a crowd to yourself and then people see what you're doing. Telling everyone could lead to pride. In yourself. There are things, my brothers and sisters, that you need to keep to yourself. Amen? There are things that you and God should know. He knows. And if you don't have the practice of keeping stuff between you and God, I'm here to tell you, I would highly encourage that today. If I may, I'd like to share a bit more, Jason. I believe that we need to commit our plans to God. I believe that once you commit your plans to God, are you ready? Do it! Do it! The doing part is the best part. I believe you should have a few people who should support you. I believe that you should have them you don't necessarily need it. You must put in your heart to do it. And listen to me, trust the process. Trust the process. Trusting the process is the real step in faith of faith. Does that make sense? Of course it does. Verse 13. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well of the refuse gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were with fire, which were burnt, well, I'm sorry, with the gates which were burned with fire. So put that second slide up of the historical account, my brother. I'm going to walk and talk about that. Yes, you're beautiful. Thank you. He is so detailed. I'm sorry if you lost me on the camera. 
He is so detailed in the account that even today, along with chapter 3, listen to me, this is the best historical record to the extent of history given in the post Alix area. What, Pastor Donnie, what is the post Alix area? Thank you for asking, Brad. It is the area from time from 535 BC till the time of Christ's birth. That's what that means. This is the most detailed map we have. And this is what historians call the most understanding they had of what the city looked like. Nehemiah rode outside the outside of the overthrown walls, beginning with the valley gate. Do you guys see the valley gate? Right here. So he's out there. And then he went around, all around the valley gate to the jackal wall, to the dung gate, which is in the very south. Dung gate. And the dung gate is what it is. It's where they put the poo. It's where they excremented. It's where they got the poo out of the place. This gate was where the refuge of the city was populated through the valley of Hinnon. The fountain gate, as you can see that on there, is right next to it in the bottom right. That is a little fire along, along the southern corner. So you can visualize with you, for those of your visual learners, like myself, you can see him weaving around, looking at what needs to get fixed, putting eyes on it. And then you can see the valley of Hinnom. The fountain gate is there. The, 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 the Kidron Valley. So literally when we go, you will see the Kidron Valley. You'll see where all of this stuff and how Jerusalem has set in a valley. It's, 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 it's such a big deal when we get over the hill and we sing this song, Oh, Jerusalem. I don't know. Sorry, I'm assassinating it, but it's awesome. But we get over and we get to go into the valley and see. And as soon as you drive up and in the valley, you see the Dome of the Rock. And you see all these places that existed then and now in dirt. Now, it's not the same edifices, but it's real. And it's, I hope I'm selling you on this because it's so amazing. I want you all to go with us. Nehemiah looked, and there's something very cool here. The king's pool, the pool of Siloam. Hezekiah built, yeah, there it is down there, bottom left, pool of Siloam. That has only been recently excavated in the last two years. It's real. I taught there. I was humbled to see the actual pool of Siloam that exists to this day and has been recently found. This is where Nehemiah dismounted. And he, got, he dismounted because his mount was unable to go through. In other words, there were so many rocks, so much destruction, that if he got on his horse, he would break the ankle's horse, the horse's ankle. So many rocks. It was, it was destroyed intentionally. Super sad. I want you guys to know that in October of 2025, as I talked to Pastor Shea about it, we're putting together a couple of other churches are going to go with us. So we started the pastors praying. We're going to Israel in faith. I want you to come, having all the details. 13 days, 12, you lose two to travel, but 13 days to go and see where Jesus walked, where the history of the Bible is made alive, and where Nehemiah went. Pretty cool, huh? I want you to pray about coming. So as we circle back to verse 14 and 15, Nehemiah again. Nehemiah, if we read him real quick, says this, Then I went to the fountain gate to the king's pool, but there was no room for, for the uh, animal to go under my pass. Again, the ground is bad, so I went up in the night, by the valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered the valley gate and so returned. Again, Nehemiah is gathering information to gain victory in making a plan. Do we do that? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Do we do that? It's hard to say we do that in some things and some things we don't, right? Right? Personal point of application. Personal point. Pastor Donnie, if you want to lose weight, write down everything you eat. Is it very easy to do? Yes. 
But is it hard to do? Yes. I'm learning this. How about this? Writing down a business plan when you're starting a business. You must count the cost. Writing a budget comes from figuring out income and what expenses are over a forecasted time. Not in what we think what we're going to be getting in, but what is actually coming in and how to manage it. These things might be foreign to some of us in the room, but let me tell you what, these things are biblical. Making plans are at the heart of God. God made plans, makes plans, and lets us be involved in the plans. This historical account, I'm hoping it stirs us into doing some deep personal reflection in our lives. Those questions, how did we get here? How did we get here? Moments, right? What is the next back, next step? Am I doing what God has called me to do? Am I doing what God has called me to do? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? These are real questions to suppose as we walk out life here. God loves us, and let me say this. He wants us to flourish in his will and in his plan for us. Let me tell you what, I got big man love for Nehemiah. I got, like, I wish I could hug this guy. Last night we played a little volleyball. My legs are sore. Thank you guys. It was awesome with the youth. Yeah, for sure. But Nehemiah, like, who we'd asked, who would you want to meet? I want to meet this guy. I think I want to have purpose to rebuild, reconstruct, and help people in their lives. Verse 15, so I went up in the night by the valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered the valley gate, and so I returned. Nehemiah is doing the necessary recon for the job at hand. Listen to this. He did not seek the counsel or the well-being of what was what. He did the hunting for himself. He did the looking for himself. Secondhand information is good, but there's nothing like finding out yourself. Sometimes we can deceive ourselves if we only look at what's good. You know, some have no problem with this. They always find it easy to see what's wrong. They're full of criticism. They believe they have this unique spiritual gift of pointing out what's wrong. But Nehemiah teaches us by example, we must look at the broken down towers and carefully study what's going on. But only if we have the heart and the prayer and the vision and the passion of God to set it right. Anybody can be critical. Are you making plans to make it right? There is little use in the kingdom of God for those who offer advice without really knowing firsthand the condition of the problem. Does that make sense, Shauna? I think it does. I think it's important that we see my second takeaway. We see people and we see problems. Let's talk about this. He notes a group of leaders in the help, and these were people who were living in Jerusalem at the time. Hey, progress was being made. Worship was happening. But those are, there could be some people, right, who only want to focus on good and not take great reflection at the bad. It's important that we look at the bad, what's happened, and grow from it, grow from it and become positive in it. It's important that we look at how God, look to God and ask him to change us. When we've come to those crossroads in life, when we realize there's change needed. Does that make sense again? 
We see people, we see people who are doing well in the Lord. There are many people who are. Then we see people who are not. We see people who have gained victory over sin, but they still have broken down walls. They just don't know how to get the wall mended, fixed, repaired, if you will. Some folks get caught up in a sin or a lifestyle of sin without them ever realizing or don't even know how to change it. Is that you today? Let me tell you this. Jesus Christ is the only one who can fix the walls of your life. He is the only one to mend, to hem, to repair, to restore to the level you need. But you must choose. You must have the mind shift in your brain to let the Holy Spirit do it in you. I came across this in my studies and I want to share this with you. When we look at the church, hey, we love the church and are thankful for what God does here. But when we look honestly, we're probably not satisfied with the impact we've made in our community. We cannot say that, it, that it's enough or there should be, when we know that there should be far more. We think about the financial support and the outreach and the spread of the word of God and the church. And yet know that there could be more done on an even broader, broader scale. Don't you agree? If someone took a tour of your life, let's just make it applicational. The same way Nehemiah took a tour of Jerusalem. They might notice broken down portions, portions figuratively of the walls of your life. Proverbs 25 and 28, for those taking notes, Proverbs 25 and 28. Whoever has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Many lives are like a city with broken walls, living with a constant sense of fear, maybe poverty, maybe insecurity. We should not hide our eyes from the broken down places. God wants to change them. And the first, cha- the first step is acknowledging that they're there. We will always see people. We will always see problems. And we need to do some genuine reflection in our own lives. Amen? Praying you get that my heart is not to cast aspersions, but for you to look at yourself. As I look at the word looking at me. Verse 17 and 18. Then I said to him, you see the distress that we, how we are in Jerusalem lies in waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may long our be an approach. Verse 18. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. And they set their hands to do this work. Good work, sorry, good work. So Nehemiah meets with the leaders. Those guys probably great, great, they probably reasoned that the job repair was maybe 100 years, maybe 100 years to fix. It could have been insurmountable in their eyes. You ever seen something that's insurmountable? They were just probably content with being content. Hey, this is good enough, we're good enough, and I'm good enough with being good enough. Thank goodness for men like Nehemiah. Nehemiah doesn't want to survive, he wants to thrive. He wants more than fine. They had remembered years ago that people tried and failed, people came in and stopped them. Defeat is real in some people's minds. Defeat has been defeated. Do you know that? It's the doing part that's the hard part. Teaching and drawing out truth today is a gift that I ask God for every day of my life. 
as I spend every minute of my life when I'm driving now, listening and getting better so I can prepare to share with you. The learning part is awesome and I get it, but the doing part is what God wants from us. The doing part. What is knowledge without application? What is it? It could be a four-year degree that has not helped you become what God intended for you. Let's just be honest. It could be a dead-end job that has not allowed you to serve God and what God has called you to do. God has called you, some of you in this room, to be missionaries. What are you doing about it? Visionaries. People of faith are in this room today. Nehemiah says this exactly. Let's rise and rebuild in verse 18. We don't have a building. But we have these buildings that need some rebuilding. That need some reconstruction. Maybe we've been putting things in our mouth that are helping in our destruction. It's time to rebuild, my friends, in all that we do. We see the distress you're in. If you don't know what kind of distress our country is in, you need to wake up. This place is a mess. It's not the place where I grew up. And we become numb to it when we stay in it long enough. I'm not being numb anymore. And I'm encouraging you not to be numb anymore. Look, don't forget Nehemiah got a heathen king to move in this. This Nehemiah got a heathen king to move in this and to finance it. Surely he could get God's people after it, huh? If God's in something, couldn't he get us to do something? It's time to rebuild, my friends. Start with yourself. Verse 19 and 20 as we finish this up. I don't even like reading this text because I can't hate these guys. Lord, help me. But when Sanballat the Hornite and Tobiah the Ammonite, the official, and Gushim the Arab heard of it, they laughed at us. And they despised us and said, what is this thing you're doing? Will you rebel against the king? Verse 20. So I answered them and said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build, but you have no heritage or right, or memorial in Jerusalem. Here are the haters again. Did I tell you that there will always be haters? Let me say this, and let me say this clearly and succinctly to all and to everyone who has ears to hear this. Spiritual oppression to the work of God that he wants to accomplish is a reality that many Christians fail to take into account. And then they're defeated in what God wants them to do. He's interested in you just sitting there. The devil's, oh, she got born again. That's cool. But when you step out to do, we will have oppression. We work from a place of victory, but sadly the church doesn't believe that. We don't. I'm telling you that's what it is. Whether or not you believe it is on you. But this is a truth that I must share with you. I believe this is one of the reasons why our king, our savior put on flesh. He knows what it's like to be defeated. He knows what it's like to be under attack. He has shown the victory. He has shown us how to break through. Amen? He's taught us all these things. And he came off that cross. He ain't out there no more. Repent and believe and trust the process. Once you've confessed Jesus as Lord, he ain't up there no more. He's here and he's there. I have not given you some history about these two characters. Let's do it now. Tobiah. Tobiah. 
This is a Jewish name. He was a man of influence. He was associated with the high priest family. And he got help from the high priest. Nehemiah 13, 4, we're going to come to that. He's going to talk about that. His name, Tobiah. This is a prominent name. And it means, are you ready for his name, what it means? Yahweh is good. God is good. Kind of strange for a man who's an opponent of God's work, huh? Who's against God's work. Opponent. His name means Yahweh is good. And he's against God's word. God's listing and God's man. Sam Ballot was connected by marriage from a, pri a priestly family. We're going to find that out also in Nehemiah chapter 13. Uh, where they found some ancient documents that are correlated from this period and refers to this Sanballat guy as the governor of Samaria. So another Jewish leader. It's my last takeaway. Division can come from within. Division can come, sometimes will. Division can, will, sometimes Sorry for the pearl comes, but it's come. <laughs> These men were Jews, were fellow brothers. They were brothers of Nehemiah and the citizens of Jerusalem. We might have thought that they would have supported his work, but they do not. Opposition is always difficult. But when it comes from brothers, when it comes from sisters... When it comes from your people, it's mixed with the pain of betrayal. Be mindful of this, my friends. These two guys laughed and scorned is what it says. In other words, who are you trying to fool? It's always been this way. It ain't going to change. Let's make it personal. Donnie, this is just for me. And this is some of the lies that speak into my head. You've, you've always been big. You've always been big. You're always going to be big. Those are lies. Kill the noise. Do your part and not eat late at night. I'm just speaking from personal experience. Because I've been doing good in this whole no sugar thing. Just to let you know. I'm killing it. Y'all yeah. <laughs> with your demonic cookies out there. Sorry. We need to kill that noise. These guys don't even realize that the king is on board in what they're doing. These guys are fools. Sometimes Christians don't even realize. They just get up and leave. They don't care. They don't see the good hand of God in the place that they're worshiping. It gets a little tense. Somebody says a little something. Oh, I can leave. I can go down the street, down the corner. I mean, there's five of them as we come down Bell. Let's be honest. Maybe with some of you. I love you. Be mindful of that. Nehemiah responds in verse 20, these guys. No defense to these guys. No recap. God will prosper us. If you stay and don't help, listen, you won't be a part of what God's doing. I think today this is such a big deal. How could we apply this today? Let me say this again, and I'm going to encourage you with this as we fortify the cement of faith in this church. You can't grow where you're not planted. You can't grow where you're not planted. People leave and go to this church and that church and blah, blah, blah. It's so Western. It's so American. It is. You grow where you're planted. You grow where your roots are able to take soil in the lives of others. If you don't get involved, how will you grow? If you don't want to be a friend, how can you have friends? Simple stuff. Nehemiah is laying it out for these guys. You ain't going to be a part of it. I think it's important that we understand this truth. The title of this message was The Wall. I'm praying that we did some construction and hopefully some repairs of some walls in your life today. I'm praying you actually 
for a lack of a better term, can I say this in love as a 54-year-old man? Stop blaming others. Oh my gosh, I'm so sick of hearing that from Christians. Everybody blames everybody else except for they don't look in the mirror and go, I need to change, Lord. We need to change. And we can't be effective in change until we are honest with what we need to change. Some of us need some walls burnt down, amen? Some of us got some sinful pride. Some of us don't even like hearing this. Sorry, not sorry. It's the truth that God's work does when it's convicting and correcting. It looks to seek because it loves to heal. God's word always does that. It is the surgeon that knife is so sharp that it cuts you but also leaves it so when it hems, you never see it. God's word is so good. On the cover of this, my next tattoo is the sword and the trial. And everybody carries that. Women, too. You all are mighty warriors. And those who don't know it, Kobe has a book about it. She probably taught it. I think she did. About the warrior woman. Y'all are warriors. I'm, pr I'm praying that we gathered some truth from this today. As we enjoyed this journey in Nehemiah chapter 2. What did we learn? The details matter. Details matter. Details, and the devil ain't in him. The reason why he's in him is because you ain't detailed. We see people and problems. You are always going to, when you put on the heart of grace and follow Jesus Christ, you're going to see problems. It's okay. It's okay. That's part of love. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 if you haven't in a while. It's the solution. Love believes all things, bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Put your name in there. Oh, don't do that. Division can come from within. And I'll even take it a step further. Division can come within you. You're your worst enemy. As we do every week, and thank God for it, we give the opportunity for those to be born again, as it says in John chapter 3. One must be born again. What does it mean to be born again? It means to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, to know that his perfect work on the cross of Calvary that we potentially will see when we go there, you'll be able to see where the tomb is. You'll be able to see Golgotha, the place of the skull. It's there. It's real. I'll take you and see it if you'd like to. It ain't fake. That Jesus died a sinner's death. He became sin for us. As it says in the word of God, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But more than that, he took on our sin debt that we could not pay. He gave us the hope of heaven by believing and trusting in the gospel, the evangelio, which means good news. What is the good news? That he died for your sin and my sin and for the sin of the whole cosmos. That whosoever, who's a whosoever in here? I'm a whosoever. Believes in him will have everlasting life. We had a little kid today do that. We did, Pastor Che, love you. Thank you for being obedient. And it's very simple. It's simply this, that you believe and trust in Jesus Christ. If you've never accepted him as your personal savior and you want to know today that if you were to die on your way home, and sadly it could happen, that you would be, your last step here would enter into your first step into heaven that your sin debt is paid by trusting in Jesus Christ. Is there anybody in the room with their eyes closed and heads bowed, anybody in the room who want to accept Jesus Christ today as their personal Lord and Savior? 
by the authority of the word of God, I speak on this truth. Anybody at all? Recommit. There you go. Love it. Thank you for the, for those watching online, for those in Mexico, for those everywhere. We thank you for this. Reach out to us. Thank you for this time with you. Let's stand now. And let's be a blessing to each other. Amen. Were you challenged today? Yes. Would you learn something today? Yes. Amen. I'm going to start blessing you as the New Living Translation says. Do you guys know this Bible verse? Version? It's good. It says it this way, and I'm going to say with your arms in a state of preparedness to receive with hearts bent and rent, asking to openly, open, open hands to receive this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord show his favor and give you his peace. May you today leave this place knowing that you heard from God's word. And now it's time to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen. amen. God bless you. Love you guys. Thank you for being a part. Yay.